Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Laura Satzer, and I'm the proud principal of Bruce Bento Elementary. <laughs> and on behalf of our staff, students, and families, we would like to welcome all of you here today. Uh, I want to say thank you to Governor Waltz and Lieutenant Governor Flanagan and Speaker Hortman um, and the Educationer, Commissioner uh, Ricker, and all the legislatures uh, who for coming out to our school today. We're so excited that our teacher governor chose to come back to the classroom to sign into law this education budget that will help support Minnesota, Minnesota students right here at Bruce Vento, like all of our pre-K students that you see sitting right there. And of course, all of the other students across our state. It's a wonderful thing. So I'm now gonna turn it over to Governor Walls to say a few words. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and to members of the press. Yes, it is May, and we're here to sign a budget into law. So uh, I am. Small wonders, small wonders. But uh, Principal Sotzer, thank you. Thank you for welcoming us. More importantly, thank you for the work you're doing here. You can feel it when you walk in this building. You can feel the learning. Um, uh, walking into that classroom and, uh, and spending some time with Ms. Thompson's class. I don't remember all the names, George, Tyrena, and we're starting to get to know. Watching, uh, watching our future at work, watching good friends and good learners in that classroom, showing us how we line up and come down the hall. Um, and when we asked how much you enjoyed being here, it was cheers about this is a fun place to be. So we are grateful, uh, we are grateful for that. To uh, Superintendent Gothard, thank you for your leadership. Uh, thank you, these, these are taking place in classrooms. <laughs> this activity, these, uh, these building leaders, these educators that are here, and this wonderful opportunity is happening all across this great city and all across Minnesota, so we thank you for your leadership. Uh, Commissioner Ricker, thank you for a lifetime of service to our children, and uh, thank you for taking on this job of making sure that we are there as a resource to support um, these classroom teachers, to support these principals, to support these superintendents, and most importantly, support these families and children so that they can get the opportunities they deserve. So we are grateful for that. I'm proud to stand here a few moments away from signing in an E-12 uh, budget, uh, and I'm especially proud to be here with a group of legislators, and uh, Lieutenant Governor will make sure all of you are recognized for the hard work that you did here. Um, but this is really something special. We proved to the rest of the country that we could come together as one of the nation's few divided governments, and we could come together first and foremost and put Minnesota's values first, put Minnesota's children first, and to make sure that when we got to this bill, and when you think about it, it may seem like this is just kind of the normal thing that we do. It's not the normal thing. We see it every day. We see uh, gridlock. We see partisanship. Uh, today we're going to see a bill that uh, all of us uh, made compromises to get here, but the goal is focusing on these children and on the future was clear. The House passed this piece of legislation 112 to 13, and the Senate passed this piece of legislation 67 to 0. Um, trying to find that type of consensus around something this important is what we were sent to do. And I'm proud that this invests in those things that we care about, making sure that every child, regardless of zip code, race, economic background, no matter what, gets the opportunity to be in the best schools in the country with the best opportunity to succeed. We made sure that we were investing in these schools with two and two on the formula, and that formula of money is so important because it allows local leaders to have the flexibility and control to innovate, to do the things they want to do. We made sure that Minnesota did its part in making sure that our students and our special ed students had every opportunity that they need to be able to succeed, and making sure that when the federal government brought a mandate to do that, we're gonna do it anyway in Minnesota, and we made sure that that cross-subsidy did not pull away from every student's opportunity to get the classroom to services they need. Um, and that happened. And right in front of us in Ms. Thompson's class, we have 4,000 voluntary pre-K slots that are available across Minnesota. 80 of them are right here in this building, and those are back again. So, And of course, we couldn't have done it without the advocacy of teachers, of the school board members who are here. I want to say thank you to, to the administrators who are here, to the parents, uh, to the students themselves who understand and are out there advocating. And we saw uh, middle school and high school students come to the Capitol to advocate for the causes of being engaged in this. And certainly, we could not have done it um, without 
the legislators who are here today, who made this happen, who brought together, brought their ideas together and crafted a bill. And I can tell you over the, the last three weeks, um, when you spend 20 hours a day with someone, you get, to, <laughs> you get to know them pretty well. And what I can tell you is, is that I've gotten to know about our Speaker of the Minnesota House and Speaker Melissa Hortman is a, uh, a wise, a compassionate, a strong, and a driven leader to make sure that the things that are most important for Minnesota are being represented in the pieces of legislation that we sign. So with that, it's my pleasure uh, and honor to introduce uh, my dear friend, now I can say that, we've spent a lot of time together, uh, our Speaker of the House, Melissa Hortman. Well, it's so nice to have a public school teacher in the governor's office. Um, the commitment that this uh, gentleman and this team brought to this work was just unparalleled. Um, and this is why we do it. Um, these beaming four-year-old faces, these um, four-year-olds who deserve the opportunity to get a great start in life. All those uh, countless hours at 2.30 in the morning arguing about uh, where dollars would go, this is why we do what we do. And in the House DFL, caucus, we really uh, believe that every child in Minnesota deserves a world-class education. Chair Davney, uh, Chair Joachim, and Chair Pinto worked around the clock during the legislative session to put these phenomenal funding uh, packages together. Uh, Chair Pinto really focusing in on the early childhood learning opportunities, Chair Joachim making sure we had policies to support students, and Chair Davney really going to battle to get the most possible money we could for the E-12 system knowing that it's not enough just to keep up. We need Minnesota students to have the chance to get ahead. And it's, it's really an honor uh, for me to serve in the role as speaker. I miss uh, one of our best members of the Minnesota House, but I'm delighted that we still get to work together um, in her new role as the Lieutenant Governor for the state of Minnesota. Thank you. Well, hello everyone. Um, we had a very exciting afternoon where we met some new friends. Um, we met our friend Harry and Penelope, and I met my new friend Serena, and we have the same, um, our favorite uh, little pony is who? Remember? Pinkie Pie. We both like Pinkie Pie, and Pinkie Pie's on her shirt, so just check it out if you can. So I wanted to start by recognizing um, some key legislators uh, who are here. Um, we did this as a team and put this budget together as a team, and we're so grateful for all of your work. So of course, Chair Davney, uh, Chair Joachim, Chair Pinto, uh, Representative Erdahl, uh, Chair Nelson, uh, Senator Weger, um, and uh, Representative Lesh, thank you so much for hosting us here in your district. We appreciate all of you so much. And of course, a shout out to all of our school board members. As a recovering school board member, I appreciate uh, all of your good work uh, so much. So today we are joined um, by those directly impacted by the education bill and our littlest learners who are here, who are ready for kindergarten. Um, and we are so thrilled to be able to spend some time with you. Our students, our teachers, and our, dis our school districts. Looking around the room um, reminds us that we do the work for the people of Minnesota, for the future of the state of Minnesota, um, and that we wanna become the education state. We're not only uh, proud of the bill we are about to, the governor's about to, to sign, but we are proud to say that it lays a strong foundation. It is a down payment to the future of Minnesota, which we will continue to build upon. And one thing that is uh, really important uh, personally to me, and I'm grateful uh, that it was included in the bill, was the dollars for our American Indian uh, tribal contract schools. Um, yeah, you can clap for that, that's great. Um, what this bill does is uh, equalizes funding for students enrolled in Bureau of Indian Education schools by keeping funding levels pegged to the general education formula and investing over $8 million in American Indian tribal schools over the next four years. Uh, and the reason that that matters, and I think that the governor has made a real commitment to say all kids in Minnesota are our kids, including our children who go to Bureau of Indian Education schools. So this makes a, a big difference. Stabilizing the funding source lays a strong foundation for continued growth and opportunity for our students, and, and that is exactly what this bill does. 
The other thing that, um, not this bill specifically, but that we wanted to raise up, especially being here at Bruce Vento Elementary, um, is because we know that Bruce was a long time housing advocate. The budget agreement uh, we were able to come to also includes dollars for homework starts at home. And I have to say, yeah. And it's one of the ways where we have we've talked a lot about um, the fact that that our children, our young people don't come in pieces. And so having a, a safe place to sleep at night, a place to live and a place to do your homework is critical to student success. So I just wanted to lift that up as a key piece um, of, of the budget agreement that we came to and knowing that this is something that has a long time bipartisan uh, support. So thank you so much. Um, and I just finally wanted to say, uh, you know, we all spent um, long periods of time late into the night and early into the morning uh, working on this, this budget together, um, but always remembering that students uh, were at the center of these conversations. As the mom of a kindergartner, soon to be first grader, um, uh, you know, this is something that we think about every, every single day. So with that, I am uh, proud to bring up uh, our teacher governor, our educator in chief, uh, Tim Walls, who's going to sign the bill. But first, uh, Ms. Thompson and Ms. Anderson's class, are you ready to follow some directions again? Okay, because you did a really good job getting into line. So I'm going to ask you to come up and I want you to stand by our friend Tim while he signs this bill, okay? Can you do that? This feels pretty comfortable. Yeah. Okay, come on up here. So with this signature, I can tell you that because of all of you and the investment that Minnesotans have made, Minnesota's future looks bright. My first budget bill of being governor of Minnesota is now law. There you go. 